for the introducing the monolith and uh, then I will start. Okay. Merhabalar. Bugün yine veriyle ilgili önemli bir konu ve konukla sizlerle beraberiz. Öncelikle günaydın diyerek sözlerime başlamak istiyorum. Ve bu teknik problemden dolayı da sizlerden özür diliyorum. Bu kullandığımız sistem farklı gruplar tarafından da kullanılıyor ve bizden önce bir toplantı vardı. O toplantı biraz geçkince mecburen bizim de toplantımız biraz geçikmiş oldu. O yüzden kusura bakmayın. Dediğim gibi bu toplantı ve bu konu gerçekten çok önemli ve şöyle literatüre baktığımız zaman belki de Türkiye'de bu alanda ve bu konuda yapılan ilk etkinlik diyebiliriz. Veriyle ilgili konuşmaya devam ediyoruz. Veri yönetimiyle ilgili konuşmuştuk. Argos'tan bahsetmiştik. Okunayla veri yönetim aracı olan Argos'tan bahsetmiştik. Fair Prensip ile ilgili toplantılarımız olmuştu ve verilerinize nasıl diğer araştırmacıların ulaşabileceğiyle ilgili prensiplerle ilgili bilgiler vermiştik, ondan bahsetmiştik. Bugün ise verilerinizi nasıl anonimleştirebilirsiniz? Çünkü buradaki en önemli problem veri belki yayından daha değerli ve daha önemli ve daha uzun süre kullanılabiliyor. Ama bir taraftan da artık hem Avrupa'da hem de Türkiye'de KVKK kapsamında verileri paylaşmak, verileri bir başkasına vermek, verileri e, yeniden kullanmak konusunda ciddi anlamda yaptırımlar geldi. O yüzden de hem e, bu değerli veriden e, vazgeçmemek hem de usulüne uygun bir şekilde e, bu KVK veya Avrupa Birliği'ndeki GDP e, kurallarını ihlal etmeden verilerimizi nasıl anonimleştirebiliriz ve verilerimiz araştırmalarda hem kendimiz hem de başka araştırmacıların kullanımını nasıl sağlayabiliriz? Bununla ilgili bugün konumuz. Bugünkü webinarımız aslında OpenAir'in geliştirdiği ve sizlere servise sunduğu Amnezi adlı bir araçtan bahsedeceğiz. Amnezya Atina Research, Atina Araştırma Enstitüsü tarafından OpenAir için geliştirilmiş bir e, araç. Bu şu anda beta olarak kullanılıyor ve e, bu konudaki belki Türkiye ilk e, sunum alan ülkelerden bir tanesi. İlk defa belki sizlerin bilgiler oluyor. Çevrim içi olarak e, test amaçlı şu anda kullanılabiliyor ama isterseniz hassas verileriniz için, başkalarının görmesini istemediğiniz veriler için ve bu verilerin anonimleştirmesi için e, indirebiliyorsunuz ve çevrim dışı olarak da kendi sistemlerinizde kullanabiliyorsunuz. Ve e, özellikle OpenAir tarafında şu anki kullanım amacı daha çok işte sağlık verileriyle ilgili projelerdeki sağlık verilerinin anonimleştirmesi gerekiyor. Ee, süresinde bu aracı e, kullanıyor OpenAir. Biraz da bugünkü konuşmacımızdan bahsetmek istiyorum. Bugünkü konuşmacımız e, Atina Araştırma Merkezi Bilgi Yönetim Sistemleri Enstitüsü'nde çalışan arkadaşım Monolis e, Trovitis. Kendisi zaten e, uzun bir zamandır veri analizi, veri gizliliği, veri anonimleştirme yöntemleriyle ilgili çalışıyor. Atina Ulusal Teknik Üniversitesi'nden e, doktora derecesini aldı ve daha sonra Hong Kong Üniversitesi Bilgisayar Bilimleri'nde doktora sonrası çalışmalar yaptı ve tekrar Yunanistan'a dönüp e, bu enstitüde çalışmaya başladı. Kendisi Yunanistan'da akreditasyon sistem başkanı, bilgi toplumu yönetimi kurulu üyesi e, ve Atina'da yine Amnezya'nın geliştirilmesinden sorumlu olarak çalışıyor. Çok çeşitli Avrupa Birliği projelerinde yer almış ve şu anda da yine Avrupa Birliği tarafından finans edilen MOR araştırma projesinin proje koordinatörü olarak çalışıyor. Aynı zamanda da e, şu andaki en önemli görevlerinden birisi Yunanistan'daki Ulusal Kardiyoloji ve Onkoloji Hassas Tıp Ağı Veri Koruma Görevlisi olarak da çalışıyor. Yani e, kısacası veriyle ilgili, veri e, önemleştirme ilgili belki de dünyadaki en önemli uzmanlardan bir tanesi. 
Şimdi ben e, sözlerimi daha uzatmadan önce e, e, arkadaşıma sözümü vermek istiyorum. Biz bu esnada e, Manolis'in yapacağı sunumu Türkçe'ye de çevirdik. E, burada belki tercüme konusunda bazı yerlerde anlaşma ilgili problem olabilir. Çünkü bu konudaki lit literatürde yeni yeni oturuyor. O yüzden de biz sunumun sonrasında hem e, sunumun kaydını hem de daha sonra e, hem İngilizce hem de Türkçe sunumu e, katılımcılarla paylaşacağız. O yüzden orada bir problem yok. E, ben şimdi sözlerimi burada bitiriyorum. Ara ara gerekli yerlerde devreye girmeye çalışacağım. Sözü Manolis'e vereceğim. Good morning Manolis. Thank you very much for accepting my invitation. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here and talking to everyone. Um, I'm, unfortunately, I'm, I'm going to uh, speak in English. Uh, but uh, thanks to all the good work the presentation is uh, in Turkish so that should help uh, uh, people uh, yeah. to follow to follow what I'm saying uh, I would like uh, people to feel free, free to ask me questions when uh, something is not clear or you want some clarification uh, when I talk so uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I think the best is to to to stop and answer right there. Okay, uh, I can I can inform the people uh, about this issue. Man, this is really important. Thank you very much. Eğer herhangi bir konuda bu sunum esnasında sorularınız olursa arkadaşlar, chat box'a sorularınızı yazarsanız, sunumdan sonra veya sunum esnasında bu soruları da bir şekilde. Cevaplamaya çalışacağız. Sorularınızı isterseniz direkt İngilizce olarak da yazabilirsiniz. Manoj takip eder veya ben elimden geldiğince çevirerek ona anlatmaya çalışacağım. Floor is yours, Manoj. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm uh, I'm going to, uh, to talk to you today and show you a little demo of uh, our uh, data anonymization tool, which I called Amnesia, which is offered uh, through OpenAI. Um, but before showing, uh, demonstrating the tool, I think it's uh, useful that uh, I present some basic notions about anonymization, because uh, apart from using the tool, uh, it's important to, to understand what uh, we would like to achieve. Uh, anonymization is a word that we use in everyday language, but uh, in the context of uh, Privacy it has a more specific mean, meaning and uh, a, tech, uh, a technical content. So I will try to uh, first explain the notions and the basic techniques that are applied uh, by Amnesia. So um, the first uh, question is why should we anonymize the data? And uh, we anonymize the data for uh, several uh, reasons. Uh, first of all, it's a legal obligation in uh, almost uh, every country. Uh, the European Union has uh, created the GDPR and uh, similar uh, legislation uh, exists in uh, most countries. I don't know exactly how the uh, legal framework is in Turkey, but uh, in the whole world, the, the, the directions are the same. So. Uh, there's a legal obligation to anonymize, and then there's uh, uh, a business and uh, an ethical one. Uh, people should uh, have their privacy, they should be protect, uh, protected, and their data should not uh, be given to everyone to do as please. And uh, from a business perspective, if you cannot guarantee the privacy of your users, then uh, it's highly likely that the users would not want to use your service or they won't, uh, they will not want to uh, share the, uh, the, da uh, the data with you. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, we really want, uh, uh, from the, the research perspective and the business perspective, uh, the personal data are very valuable. Uh, we need, uh, uh, for example, uh, in, in, in the COVID area, right? Uh, studying the personal data for medical purposes, for making uh, policy, for making treatments and uh, vaccines, it is very important. Uh, if we do not provide a framework where uh, 
these data are protected, people will be very reluctant to share them. So uh, we need to, an to anonymize in order to create a safe environment where people will share the data so we can extract uh, uh, scientific and business value from them. Um, so a distinction I would like to make that follows from uh, the, Europe uh, the European General Pro uh, data Pro uh, Personal Data Protection Act is uh, uh, the difference between uh, uh, pseudo-anonymization and uh, real anonymization. Uh, unfortunately, usually the way we, we use in everyday language an, uh, anonymization is uh, by describing what we call uh, pseudo-anonymization uh, in, um, uh, in the GDPR, which is just the removal of the direct identifiers. You have a record describing some activity of a person and uh, you remove uh, the, the name or the social security number or some other direct identifier. But then there are leftovers, uh, the, the, second, uh, the secondary information that describes the individual, which is in most cases is enough to uh, identify a person. For example, if you have uh, uh, the zip code and the birth date of a person, then it's easily to combine them and find uh, uh, the identity of a person, even if it's not evident uh, in the data set. So the idea of an of anonymization is not just the removal of the direct identifiers, but it is uh, transforming the, uh, the second the secondary uh, descript descriptive information uh, from uh, very specific values to more generic to more generic one. Uh, we call this uh, process generalization. Uh, what uh, an amnesia does uh, exactly this. Uh, it uh, provides uh, an anonymization technique based on K anonymity and uh, uh, it, uh, it is, uh, we have put effort in uh, being user friendly and uh, it will allow you to offer true anonymization uh, or, or for uh, the data. Now, I think I described this uh, slide in the previous one, but uh, let me summarize again the difference between pseudo-anonymization and anonymization. Uh, pseudo-anonymization is uh, the removal of uh, direct identifiers, remove uh, social security number, remove the name, but leave all the data as they are. Real anonymization is a transformation of the whole data set where you have a guarantee that it's uh, irreversible. And uh, this means changing the accuracy of uh, uh, secondary identifiers, which in this context, we're going to call them as quasi-identifiers. Um, in the GDPR legis legislation, there is a very clear line between these two. It says uh, pseudo-anonymization can be reversed, but uh, anonymization cannot be reversed. In practice, although I'm not going to get into much technical detail today, there are gray areas. I mean, the cases where you cannot really reverse the data transformation, but you can make accurate uh, predictions about, uh, about specific people and uh, properties of uh, their data records. But uh, let's keep the, the two notions uh, uh, clear that pseudo-anonymization is a kind of uh, uh, a, a kind of uh, superficial anonymization which uh, pr uh, helps protect the data from uh, some uh, not very dangerous adversaries, but uh, the data, uh, th there is a way to retrieve the identities of uh, a person. And uh, in normal anonymization, then you cannot reverse the data transformation. What Amnesia does is offer anonymization and not just pseudo-anonymization. And this is uh, a, a novelty. Uh, traditional techniques based on data masking uh, offer basically anonymization because there's no guarantee that's, uh, that the transformation they do is not reversible. Now, 
uh, let me explain in uh, a bit more detail uh, how secondary information can be used uh, to reverse uh, the pseudonymization. And I will start from uh, an example which was uh, a real use case example that motivated some of the first papers in data anonymization. And it, it comes from the United States, from Massachusetts uh, state, uh, where uh, based on the law, the hospitals uh, used to give uh, pseudonymized records of uh, patient uh, treatments. So they provided all the data that's on the left cycle is here. Uh, they did not have the name, they did not have the social security number of a patient, but they're giving details about the medical procedures and also for statistical uh, reasons, they were, give, they were providing some, uh, uh, uh, some information like the date of birth, the, the zip code uh, of uh, the... Uh, the residence of uh, the patient and their gender. Uh, at the same time, uh, there were public catalogs where uh, public voter catalogs where you could not find any sensitive information, but you could find uh, the name, the address, the zip code and the date of birth uh, of uh, any person that voted in uh, the state. So even if the hospital data was uh, pseudonymized. It was easy for a third party to link these two data sets, the voters catalog and the pseudonymized hospital data to re-identify the, the persons that were associated with each record from the hospital. So based on this information, they were able to get uh, all information about the governor of, the, of Massachusetts uh, in the States and uh, the statistical result was that 87% uh, of uh, US citizens were unique based on the zip code and the date of birth. So even if you don't have a name, if you have the zip code and the date of birth of a person, then you have an 87% uh, percent, uh, probability of discovering uh, her or his identity with uh, complete accuracy. So what can we do if we have uh, such a data set? Now, I'm providing here a very simplified result uh, motivated by the previous example. And uh, let's imagine that we have uh, this uh, medical data where uh, the names uh, have been, uh, we don't have uh, any names, but uh, we do have, uh, the zip code, we have the age, and we have uh, the, the nationality of a person, and these are the quasi identifiers, information that may be publicly available in other, uh, in other places. Now, it is obvious that if I know the zip code and the uh, age of a person, then I can uniquely identify him, uh, him or her in this data set, and that way I will know uh, the disease uh, uh, that uh, she or he suffers from. So what I, I can do and what Amnesia does is transform the data by removing accuracy uh, from, the original, uh, from the original data set. So that now each person will uh, belong to a group of uh, K minus one other uh, persons which have the same quasi identifiers. Uh, the way I, we achieved uh, this here was by completely removing the information about nationality by creating three categories for ages, less than 30, uh, more than 40 and 30 to 40, and uh, by removing uh, some digit from the zip code. Now, if I know that someone uh, you know, is 20, uh, 28 years old and his zip code is uh, 13053, then from the pseudonymized code, I would directly understand that it's uh, the, uh, the person described in the first row, and I would know the uh, disease he suffers from, which is in Turkish, and I don't remember what it is now, but uh, you will <laughs> know better than I do. Um, but, uh, but now, in the anonymized data, 
uh, I can I cannot uh, identify him uh, with more accuracy than guessing that uh, it is one of the four first records. So uh, this uh, this way I can provide a guarantee that uh, any person in the anonymized data set cannot be linked to less than k candidate records. And this is uh, one of the simplest and uh, the first one guarantees that have been provided uh, called k anonymity. Uh, it is also a very natural way of uh, conceiving uh, privacy uh, where we, uh, we hide a person among the k minus one others. Uh, the basic uh, techniques we use to do this is generalization, which is the replacement of a specific value with a more uh, general one, and suppression, which is uh, the complete removal of, uh, of some values. Now, uh, in just to show you the complexity of the problem, uh, the second uh, uh, table is uh, k anonymous, so we do have a guarantee that's uh, uh, that's formal and that holds in any case, and the transformation is reversible. But as you can see, if I know that some someone uh, is uh, at his thirties uh, and uh, his uh, or her zip code is uh, thirteen oh fifty three, for example then I can be certain that uh, she or he suffers for cancer, even if I cannot identify uh, the exact record. So uh, the, the, I'm highlighting this weakness of K-anonymity. Every, every privacy guarantee has uh, some to show you that sometimes there's not a very clear line uh, between the reversible and the irreversible transformation of data. Now, uh, Despite these weaknesses, providing true anonymization shows that uh, the data curator took all the measures uh, that she uh, uh, or he could about protecting data privacy, and uh, it offers a guarantee that holds under uh, uh, any case uh, to, uh, to to the uh, to, to the subjects of the data. So there are always weaknesses that uh, the data curator has to take into account, but formal guarantees are uh, a, a higher level of privacy that uh, any pseudo anonymization method uh, is. So um, I will get in a bit more technical details uh, if you want. Uh, I will skip the most the most complicated parts, but uh, if you want me to explain something in uh, deeper level, then uh, uh, just stop me and uh, ask some more questions. Now, the, the, in the data anonymization process, uh, when we're dealing with k-anonymity or many other guarantees that are achieved through data generalization, and Amnesia is using this kind of methods basically, uh, around k anonymity. The most difficult uh, thing that uh, the user must do is provide some kind of rules on how to generalize the data. And uh, these rules uh, should be formed like a hierarchy, where at the bottom level you can see the most detailed values. Here we have a geographical uh, hierarchy. So um, Actually, this hierarchy gives directions to the algorithm on how to uh, do replacements of values uh, from going from very specific ones to very abstract ones. Uh, so in the lower level, you can see uh, some European countries. Uh, in um, the second level, some areas of Europe. Okay, this is a very naive uh, uh, hierarchy. And at the top level, uh, every value falls under Europe. So given this kind of uh, directions, uh, the, algor uh, the algorithm will work on uh, following the strategy, the full domain as follows. Uh, it will say that 
if I keep uh, all the values in the most detailed level, do I achieve k anonymity? Do all records fall in groups of uh, k uh, k records with similar uh, quasi identifiers? If not, then uh, it replaces all specific values with their more generic counterpart, and uh, then again tries to calculate k anonymity. Is it k anonymous now? If it's not, then it generalizes uh, more the uh, the data and uh, so on till uh, it reaches uh, uh, the, the higher level. Um, now I'm seeing uh, two questions here, so uh, I will answer them uh, right now. The first one is if we have some data that's uh, just uh, one piece of data or some data that cannot fall uh, in uh, in a set of k different records, uh, the solution for in these cases is to remove it. Every algorithm might uh, choose a bit different handling, but uh, in amnesia, uh, we we would remove uh, isolated records, or even if uh, uh, the privacy guarantee is violated uh, by very few records, we will give the option to the user to just remove them. And I will show this in the demo. Um, also, some discussion about the order of the data. I uh, did not get here in uh, details, but yes, randomization of uh, the result is important. Uh, the randomization of the order of the result is important to uh, guarantee privacy. Here, I don't do any kind of randomization. Uh, so it is easy to uh, see the difference between the original record and the final record. But yes, uh, uh, randomizing the order uh, is an extra measure of uh, providing privacy protection. Um. <coughs> now. Okay. Uh, now the that that basically uh, two strategies when uh, not you but uh, two main strategies when we are doing uh, the generalization. Uh, one of them is to do a full domain uh, a global recording. That is that we go level by level in the generalization hierarchy. So, for example. If we had these data set on the left and we wanted to achieve k anonymity, we would be forced to generalize everything uh, uh, on the higher level. Another uh, way would be to do uh, local recording, uh, which means that we do not have to bring every kind, uh, every result to the same granularity level to generalize all values. Uh, to the same uh, level hierarchy, but we can uh, only generalize them as much as needed to achieve k anonymity. So if we wanted to have two anonymity here by following uh, the, first uh, the first result of uh, global full domain recording, we would have to do a lot of generalization in uh, uh, the geographical uh, quasi identifier. But if we follow a local, uh, uh, a local generalization strategy, then we only have to, uh, we can preserve a lot more information. As you see now, not everything is generalized to Europe, uh, but you have uh, uh, Greece uh, stays as Greece. And uh, I don't know if this is South of North Europe, uh, we don't, uh, it's South Europe. Uh, then uh, some other uh, than the first two records are not generalized to Europe, but to Southern Europe, so more accuracy is preserved. Uh, this is a more complicated strategy for the algorithm to follow, uh, and it gives a more complicated result, but uh, informa information is better preserved. In Amnesia, we follow the first strategy, the global, uh, uh, the global full domain recording, which has uh, a bit greater information loss, but it's uh, simpler to, to understand. Um, 
in the future versions and actually in, in the last algorithm we provided, we do have local recording, but I, I will keep uh, here the examples on the simplest algorithms where full domain uh, generalization is uh, used. Okay, I think uh, here uh, I just have a schematic on uh, how the quality of the result and the complexity of the anonymization uh, goes. Uh, if uh, local, re uh, local recording is uh, the most complex method that provides uh, the best uh, uh, data quality preservation, global recording, uh, which is uh, the, uh, the replacement of a value with uh, a more generic one throughout the data set uh, provides uh, better results and full domain, uh, which is uh, going from one level to another level uh, in the generalization hierarchy uh, provides the worst results in terms of uh, uh, data quality, but it's, it is the simplest one to implement and to understand. Uh, okay, let me let me take a peek at the English one. I don't remember exactly what I've written here. Okay. Um, we, I I do have some information on. Uh, and more complicated uh, data privacy guarantees that are provided by Amnesia. Uh, I'm going to get through them very briefly because uh, they're more complicated than I think uh, for a first webinar, uh, they will give you more trouble than uh, a solution. But one thing to remember is that uh, a unique characteristic uh, to Amnesia uh, compared to any other solutions to data anonymization is its handling of more complex data. And uh, as a characteristic example here is set value data. Uh, now to explain to you what set value are compared to uh, the previous uh, uh, table data are. Uh, in the previous data, which are relational tables uh, in the data management community, we do have uh, uh, tables where we have a fixed number of uh, uh, fields uh, in each record. So if we go up here, then uh, each, rec uh, each record has uh, five values. The first one is a number. Uh, the second one is the postcode, the third one is the age, uh, the fourth one is uh, the ethnicity, and uh, the last one is uh, the disease. So each record, uh, each record has five fields and it's a fixed length and uh, fixed semantics. Now, I'm going back down. When we, in most uh, real, uh, real world cases, uh, we do have data that uh, are not of fixed length. For example, uh, if you're a student in the university, uh, you can have an arbitrary number of uh, uh, different courses from a very, a very big pool of course. So for example, each student might uh, get uh, 50 courses from an available pool of 100 courses. Uh, uh, very characteristic examples of such data, uh, which we call sparse multidimensional data, are credit card bills or, in general, any kind of retail uh, retail transactions. You go to a supermarket and you buy 20 products out of 20,000 products. So, <coughs> uh, and you can buy from one product till maybe 100 different ones. So, its record. Uh, has a, di a different number of values uh, taken from a very large uh, domain. Uh, if we tried to apply k k traditional k anonymity here, then we would have uh, to, to, to treat every event of uh, 
uh, buying or not buying a specific product as a different quasi identifier. So if you go to a supermarket that has 20,000 products, uh, then uh, you would have to consider 20,000 quasi identifiers because uh, every person would be unique based on whether it bought or did not buy a single product. Uh, in uh, here, even in, in this very simplified example, if we try to provide uh, two anonymity, uh, which would mean that we should make every transaction log of a person identical to the transaction log of another person, all information could be lost. So Amnesia <coughs> offers KM anonymity, which is uh, a conditional form of K anonymity that works a lot better on uh, high on sparse high dimensional data, where instead of creating two records that have uh, exactly the same quasi identifiers, it says that I'm going to guarantee uh, to to guarantee that every combination of M quasi identifiers, where M is chosen by the data curator, exists in, in at least uh, K different records. So now, oh, sorry, I have a cut coming here to stop the webinar. Uh, so if you want to, uh, what would guarantee in a supermarket is that any adversary, any uh, malicious uh, third party uh, that knows up to M different products that a person bought uh, in uh, in a transaction, then it would not be able to identify less than K transactions. So it does not prote protect a person from a third party that knows all the products that uh, C or Q bought in the supermarket, but that would have no meaning, uh, that would be anyway meaningless because if somebody knows all or almost all, there's very little to hide, but it would protect against any third party that knows a small part of the transaction. So this is KM, KM anonymity, which is also offered uh, by Amnesia. Now, um, okay, so I have now and then to check at the English one to remember what. Okay, the strength and uh, weaknesses of, uh, of Amnesia. Um, uh, the, the, uh, the basic uh, strength, uh, no, this is the, the strengths and weaknesses of uh, K anonymity. Uh, the idea is that uh, uh, it, was, uh, it is one of the simplest ones and uh, this helps uh, in uh, understanding it, which is a very important thing for uh, the data subjects. When you provide uh, K anonymity, it's easy to explain to uh, the, uh, the person who is giving you the data uh, what the guarantee is. Uh, it's um, a very straightforward, uh, uh, a, a very straightforward interpretation of the most legal frameworks on what privacy is, because uh, uh, what you can guarantee is that no person is uh, unique in the data set. Um, being a simple one, it uh, has a low information, uh, low information loss compared to more complicated guarantees. Uh, but on the other side, there are several uh, advanced attacks, like uh, the one I described uh, in the example of cancer, uh, where some information can be leaked, even if uh, we cannot re-identify uh, any person. Um, so. If I go again to the full screen. Uh, what uh, the, ma the main challenges for amnesia, for anonymization in general uh, are in uh, my view is that uh, all privacy guarantees uh, provide a kind of statistical uh, guarantee that only partially captures uh, the social notion of, of privacy that we have. So it's not easy to decide which one is the best. Uh, people are not yet uh, well uh, 
uh, acquainted with the notion of privacy. So uh, it's difficult to parameterize uh, the privacy guarantees and decide, uh, for example, what is the suitable K for K anonymity or for more complicated guarantees like differential privacy, which is uh, uh, the right privacy budget. And uh, the last uh, and another very important uh, challenge is uh, whether anonymized data uh, are still uh, useful for research, even if they have a significant information loss, or in other words, how much information loss is to tolerable for research and practice. <coughs> Sorry. Um, Okay, uh, I have a question about uh, uh, difference on countries' regulations regarding anonymization. Um, uh, to be honest, I, I'm not uh, very well. Uh, uh, I, I'm a technical person, so uh, I have a vague notion of uh, what happens in the global uh, uh, fr framework about uh, data anonymization. I know basically the GDPR, so I, I don't know if um, other countries make such a, in other legal frameworks they make such a clear distinction between pseudo anonymization and anonymization. Uh, the distinction <coughs> exists in the technical level, but I don't know if it's reflected on uh, the legal level. Uh, uh, elsewhere. And another question is that if we have different versions of anonymized data, and uh, yes, we can. And if we're not careful, this can be a, da a danger. For example, if we anonymize uh, even with key anonymity the same data set twice with different parameters, then we can have two different data sets uh, that uh, two different versions of the same data with different anonymization parameters, which would allow. Uh, third parties to combine them and get more accurate answers that would get by provide by uh, processing each one of them independently. So uh, th this is something to, uh, uh, to to be aware of that uh, different uh, different versions uh, or different anonym anonym anonymized versions of the same data can be a danger uh, to the user privacy. Okay, so, and a bit uh, ab uh, of promotion of uh, our tool. Uh, why should one use Amnesia? Uh, uh, and what are the, its characteristics? Amnesia offers, uh, until now, it's built around key anonymity, which is uh, one of the uh, simplest notions, uh, but at the same time, one of the easiest to understand that covers uh, most legal frameworks. Uh, it also offers KM anonymity and it is unique in this, uh, uh, in this aspect. Um, it's built on uh, uh, Java and JavaScript with a very clear distinction between uh, the front, uh, uh, the interface and the backend, which is also allows you to use uh, directly the backend uh, through a different uh, information system. Uh, we have put uh, a lot of effort in uh, trying to make it uh, user friendly. Uh, I, I want, uh, I, I don't want to create very false hopes. Uh, anonymization is a new process, so not everything can be automated. Several options uh, still have to be given to the user because uh, there's no uh, great experience from practice to be able to decide in advance what are the option, the optimal parameters in several cases. Uh, we offer true anonymization and we also allow the user to see data statistics so it can decide with uh, the impact uh, of uh, uh, different choices uh, about the anonymization parameters.
okay you can find amnesia uh, in this uh, uh, uh, in this link um, most of the parts uh, have been um, uh, online and used for quite some time time now uh, so they're quite robust uh, newer future uh, newer features are less used to so we're looking uh, for feedback if you want to use amnesia either in practice or to use it as training uh, tool please uh, feel free to contact us and uh, we'll be able to help you we want uh, to promote it and we want to support people in using it in practice and this kind of feedback is very important uh, for us uh, until now we have uh, it is available uh, uh, through open air we have used it <coughs> on a european project for, for health data and uh, we're looking forward to get feedback from uh, uh, other areas of application like again i have to check once the english presentation uh, Okay, on our next work is uh, uh, to work to always work on feedback because, uh, as I told you, it's a it's a new thing. So, uh, getting feedback from practice on what's useful, what's not useful, uh, what are requirements from new application areas is very important for us. Um, we're also trying to extend it with. Uh, more privacy guarantees and more features. Uh, we have already uh, put a local recording and a disk-based algorithm that's able to scale a lot better and provide uh, results in more detail. I did not use it in the examples because it would uh, complicate uh, the discussion a lot with technical detail, uh, but the algorithm is there. And uh, finally, we're always working on uh, scalability issues because uh, anonymization is uh, a costly operation similar to data mining. So uh, optimization is uh, always uh, an important issue. Uh, so that was it uh, with respect to the presentation of how Amnesia works and the basic uh, notions of anonymization. Uh, I will go forward and show you a demo of Amnesia, but uh, maybe if you have questions uh, on uh, uh, the basic notions or from the presentation till now, uh, maybe this moment is a good one to ask me and then I will present the demo. Yes, about amnesia being useful for uh, different disciplines. Uh, I gave examples from the medical field because it is one of the most obvious applications and actually uh, had people uh, uh, that are very interested from that field. But yes, it's uh, useful in any kind of field uh, that, uh, uh, that hunts uh, personal data. Um, also, for those that uh, will try to use uh, Amnesia, um, our recommendation is uh, to download and use it locally. It requires uh, J uh, Java to be uh, installed. Uh, but the safest way, if you want to anonymize real data, is, is do it locally. And also for uh, uh, for performance purposes, in the online uh, version, we have uh, limited the size of the data set and the memory it can use. So if you want to uh, try a big example, the online uh, uh, service will not be able, able to handle it. Uh, because Amnesia is available in two ways, 
uh, one is uh, to download it and this is the one you should use for production of for the big examples and it is online which is basically just to see how it is and how it works with very simple examples so <clears throat> i will show you uh, how we can anonymize the data set and how to use amnesia uh, basically we have three things to do one is get the data set then give the parameters and the generalization hierarchy and uh, uh, then customize the parameters of the solution. So the first thing is to choose a data set. I have uh, a Amnesia. Uh, okay, thank you for feedback. Um, one, uh, uh, Amnesia accepts uh, delimited files uh, which can have uh, any delimiter. We have uh, an import wizard which is uh, close to how Excel imports uh, data. So in our first example, I'm, I'm going to treat the data like a simple uh, table where it has just a number of uh, different fields uh, of uh, fixed length. Uh, now, uh, I provided the delimiter in the previous uh, uh, screen, which is uh, the character that separates different columns. And now Amnesia has recognized the different columns. Uh, it had it takes the name of its column from uh, the first row of the data set, and then it guesses the type uh, of the data. It, it bases its guess based on the first uh, few rows. So it is just a guess and not uh, a final uh, uh, a, fi a final uh, result. So they can it can be changed and corrected by the user. Now, in the process for anonymization, the first thing is to remove the direct identifier. So uh, the ID of a patient, uh, this data are patient uh, treatments and diagnosis in. Uh, uh, UK hospitals. It's a synthetic data set uh, based on um, uh, on the work we did uh, in one of uh, the previous projects, the My Health, My Data. So by re uh, unselecting some data, this will not be important and will be ignored. Uh, they will not be transferred in the anonymized data set. So I'm keeping three fields, the diagnosis codes, the date of birth and the marital status. So data has been imported. Now, what we have to do and the most complicated part is to provide the generalization hierarchies. For categorical data, like uh, the, the, mar uh, the marital status, uh, these kind of hierarchies have to be manually created. Here, I already have one, which is basically, a grouping of uh, the values that appear in the data set. Uh, this is a true data set, so not everything is uh, clean. We would actually be interested if someone is single or married because uh, uh, for several uh, treatments, uh, it actually affects uh, uh, users. Uh, but the answers that they are given are no answer, divorced, married, no, or we do it. Um, so uh, we instruct the algorithm that this answer should be uh, replaced by single if there's such need. And if uh, just the distinction between single and married does not lead to K anonymous result, then uh, they should be replaced by any. Uh, I'm also seeing, uh, seeing in the questions, uh, there's a data set file, uh, there's a limit on the data set uh, size only in the online version. In the version you can download to, uh, to your computer, there's no limit. In the online, it's a limit because we, don't we do not have these resources available in the web server. So, uh, this generalization hierarchy has been created beforehand and I'm using it here, but Amnesia will also help me to auto-generate a hierarchy based on the data set I have uh, uh, already uh, uploaded. 
So I'm going to create a generalization hierarchy for the date of birth. Uh, obviously, auto generation uh, works a lot better in continuous domains where we have an order of the data that makes sense. And dates uh, are one of these domains, although a quite complicated one. Uh, first, I'm going to give a name to the hierarchy. Uh, Amnesia has studied all the values of uh, the incoming data set, and uh, it knows that the, doma the domain ranges from dates of 9030 to 9089. So it puts 30 to 89. Uh, now the dates are complex because we do not use a decimal system. Uh, we use a very complicated system which has years, months, and days. So I'm going to instruct uh, uh, the algorithm that uh, in the first uh, level of generalization, uh, single days, which are the dates of birth, should be grouped to seven day periods, to weeks. And then if this is not enough, it should, uh, this week should be grouped in uh, three month uh, periods. And th if this is not enough, the three month period should be grouped uh, in three year periods. And if this is not enough, uh, this group should be from then on grouped to five, uh, uh, to, uh, grouped uh, on uh, new groups of uh, size five. So this is a fun out of the rest of the generalization uh, tree. And based on this, this hierarchy is created where days have been replaced by these weeks, weeks by three month periods, uh, three month periods grouped to three, uh, uh, to three year periods. And then every group, every group is grouped to uh, every five uh, nodes are grouped to one node and this would go on till we reach one node. And this way we have created a hierarchy uh, based on uh, dates from 1930 to 1989. And now we go to the algorithm application. Um, now, I will treat uh, here only the, uh, the date of birth and the marital status as uh, quasi-identifiers. So I have to instruct the algorithm that uh, for the date of birth, use the hierarchy that we just created and we named B date. And for the marital status, use the hierarchy we named marriage. Uh, there's only one algorithm for K anonymity. I will put my value for K uh, equal to three, and then I will execute the algorithm. Now, instead of uh, directly providing us uh, with a solution, uh, the algorithm creates a lattice with all possible uh, solutions. Each node represents a solution where uh, it has, in this case, it has two numbers, one for each quasi identifier, and it tells us that the first quasi identifiers have been generalized uh, to four levels up in the generalization hierarchy. Uh, so the date of birth has been generalized to level, and marriage has not been generalized at all. Um, we can view some statistics and we get here uh, a visual representation on uh, how the different groups are created and th this is uh, no now a graphical representation of the anonymized data set where the uh, where groups of uh, containing seven percent here or five percent here of the original data set uh, are created based on the new generalized quasi identifiers. So we have all these solutions because uh, canonymity might be a, achieved in more than one way. Uh, for example, uh, here we have generalized the date of birth four times and we have not generalized marital status at all. Here we have generalized uh, date of birth three times, but we have generalized marital status uh, just once. Uh, and uh, depending on what's most important uh, in our 
for our analysis, then we can uh, choose a different solution. Uh, another important thing is that all the the uh, the blue nodes represent a valid solution that achieves k anonymity. The red nodes uh, represent uh, generalizations that are not solutions. They do not achieve k anonymity. But in several cases, uh, this is not uh, done just because of a few records. Okay, here are not very few, but in other cases that might be 0.10%. So instead of further generalizing the data, we can decide to just suppress the uh, 6.81% uh, percent of uh, the records. And uh, this way we will uh, better preserve the quality of uh, the rest 93.99 of the records, but we will completely uh, delete the six one, uh, the almost 7% of the records. And by applying this solution, we get this result uh, the first field was not touched at all. It was transferred from the original data set to the anonymized data set as it is, but the date of birth uh, from an exact date, it has been transformed to uh, a three year period and the marital status has been preserved as it is. And these two fields uh, combined uh, are K-anonymous uh, any combination of values in these two fields appears in at least three records. And uh, then we can just uh, save the anonymized data set. So uh, I think I've taken enough time. Uh, this is uh, an example of uh, the, uh, the simplest form of K-anonymity that Amnesia supports. Uh, we also have uh, Okay, I will start just to show you this. Uh, we can treat uh, set value data, object relational data, or we can treat data directly from the hard disk with local recording. So Amnesia can provide and does provide uh, more algorithms, but uh, we saw here the most uh, basic and straightforward solution. So, that is all for me. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please ask, or if later you uh, try Amnesia and you have more questions, please feel free to contact me, or if you want support to uh, use it in uh, any case, I uh, would be very happy to uh, hear from you. So uh, I'm here. If you have anything to ask, please let me know. Thank you so much, uh, it was a really great presentation. We learned lots of things, uh, lots of details about the uh, anonymization. It's not an easy process. Uh, we have a very long way to learn how we are going to anonymize our data, but uh, we are lucky that the uh, Amanese is really helpful uh, to us to anonymize our data. It's really good uh, product. Uh, as far as I see, you have uh, uh, answered most of the questions. Uh, only, oh, how do you provide the data security in Amanazia? One of the questions, one of us. Yes, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm not exactly certain what uh, you mean. We do not deal. Uh, with data security in terms of encryption or encrypted channels. That is why we uh, recommend to people to use it locally. By using it locally in your own premises, the data do not have to leave uh, at all from uh, uh, your computer. So there's no need for secure channels. And uh, in that way, you also, uh, it's uh, also, uh, usually easier to apply to legal restrictions so that non-anonymized data never leave your own premises and you do the anonymization locally. Uh, if you want um, some more details, uh, because I'm not certain what you mean with data security, please let me know. Uh, there's no back si uh, backup system. Uh, Amnesia 
what it does is uh, it reads the original data and saves the anonymized data. So in a way, there's uh, uh, it doesn't do uh, it's not a complete data management system. So it uh, does not provide some kind of uh, backup. Uh, well, if Amnesia crashed uh, and uh, you want us to provide details on what you did, please let us know. They, uh, sometimes if you don't, Amnesia needs uh, quite, uh, for the simple algorithm, it needs quite a bit of memory. So if you get a big data set or use a very big hierarchy, uh, this can cause uh, a crash. Uh, but if you do not use, uh, uh, not a class, but it will get a message that uh, uh, there's an error. Uh, but if you have classes, please uh, let us know more details so we can uh, fix the bug. Yes, we answered all the questions. Uh, uh, so thank you so much again. Uh, it was really useful presentation. Uh, Değerli katılımcılar, soruların da büyük bir kısmını cevaplamış olduk. Mahmut'un da söylediği gibi web versiyonu biraz daha kısıtlı imkanlara sahip. Sadece test amaçlı kullanılabiliyor ama eğer yazılımı kendiniz kendi güçlü bir sunucuya, güçlü bir bilgisayara indirirseniz büyük miktardaki verilerinizin de anonimleştirmesini çok kolaylıkla yapabilirsiniz. Bundan sonraki süreçte de bu konu üzerinde webinarlarımıza sanırım devam edeceğiz. Çünkü Ee, ülkelerdeki e, kişisel verileri koruma kanun çerçevesinde farklı uygulamalar veya farklı detaylar olduğunu ben birazcık daha bu webinarla beraber anlamış oldum. O yüzden de başka konuklarımızla bu konuda sizlere bilgilendirmeye ve veri, veri yönetimi, açık veri e, konusunda e, yeni bilgiler vermeye devam edeceğiz. Hepinizin katılımı için çok teşekkür ediyorum. Zaten şu anda öğlen yemeği vaktine geldik. Birazcık tahminimizden uzun sürdü. Bir dahaki webinarımızda görüşmek üzere diyorum. Bize bu konuyla ilgili her türlü sorunuzu sorabilirsiniz. Herhangi bir şekilde yardım gerektiği zaman bizden yardım alabilirsiniz. Opnaya yardım masası her zaman için maillerinizi cevaplayıp size yardımcı olmaya çalışacaktır. Uh, Manolis, uh, thank you very much again, uh, one more time. Uh, it was really great. Uh, we will share uh, your presentation uh, with the participant. Also, we are going to share uh, with your recording uh, with the participant. Uh, if you have any question uh, after, the pre after the session, I will share with you and then we can get back to uh, participants. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. And yes, please do share, share also the English version someone asked for it. And it yeah. was a great pleasure being here and thank you a lot for the invitation. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Görüşmek üzere değerli katılımcılarımız. Hoşçakalın.